Why keep on the watch? It's for our own good. It really is. See, And that's the point Jesus and Jehovah want us to take away. We're trying to address that with this talk, because some of you have been serving Jehovah for a long time, and I'm not going to stare at anybody, because I, I know different ones. And uh, it's just amazing how Jehovah has been there for you all these years. But you're only human, and we'll address some concerns that some raise. And I just want to have you think about this here. Personal experience, uh, many years ago, my sons, Jesse and Paul, were in the early years of school, elementary school. And back at the time, I haven't heard it a lot lately, but from time to time, this would come up at a social gathering. Now, mind you, they're second grade, first grade, but these boys were thinkers. So they'd listen, and they appreciated all these older ones. And we had a number of them in Rhode Island, longtime servants of Jehovah God. However, from time to time, this, this statement, and they'd be looking at my sons and, oh, you'll never graduate in this system. Not going to happen. So, you know, I'm at their house. They just fed us. Uh, <laughs> Lord, help me, what am I going to do here? But this would come up from time to time, at least during those years, and maybe it was post-1975. I don't know. Maybe it was post-1975. I don't know. So says Tony Morris, delivering his talk, Why Keep on the Watch? This is the final talk of the 2021 annual meeting Tony Morris is on the platform pleading with Jehovah's Witnesses to continue in this mindset of Armageddon is coming any moment. We need to stay on the watch. We need to stay alert. We need to stay faithful and loyal to the organization. And he's launching into this talk by means of an anecdote that's very interesting indeed. As we're going to see, he's essentially going to blame Jehovah's Witnesses who were talking to his sons at this social gathering for taking their beliefs seriously. <laughs> that's essentially the mistake that these people are making when they say to Jesse and Paul, Tony Morris's sons, oh, you'll never graduate in this system. Before I really weigh in on this, I'm going to let Tony Morris finish his anecdote so that we can think about it in context. But I did just want to flag this part midway where he says, but this would come up from time to time, at least during those years, and maybe it was post-1975, I don't know. Maybe it was post-1975, I don't know. So 1975 is getting a mention, wow. Isn't it interesting how when Tony Morris, a governing body member, is on the annual meeting platform he gets a little bit more relaxed. He's able to talk about embarrassing periods in Jehovah's Witness history just a little bit more freely because he's in front of his friends and he's in front of prominent people within the Jehovah's Witness religion who know what happened in 1975. Many of them were probably Jehovah's Witnesses at the time and can remember the certainty with which that year was put forward as a year of significance, and they can remember the hysteria surrounding that year, and the fact that Jehovah's Witnesses were encouraged to sell their businesses, sell their homes, focus on this year as being the likely year for Armageddon. The phrase at the time 
was stay alive till 75. Jehovah's Witnesses from 1966 when a book came out, Life Everlasting in Freedom of the Sons of God. When this book came out, Jehovah's Witnesses became convinced that 1975 was the year to look forward to. It didn't specifically say Armageddon is coming in this year. It was very cleverly written so as not to say that, but it did say all of the things it needed to say to point Jehovah's Witnesses in that direction, into assuming that this was the year it was all supposed to go down. Tony Morris remembers all of this because he was in the organization at the time. And again, because he's nice and relaxed on the annual meeting platform, it's not like he's doing a JW Broadcasting episode. It's not like he's doing a convention talk. He's in front of his mates. So he can just talk about it freely, knowing that he doesn't have to do too much explaining. Maybe it was post-1975. I don't know. But they'd make these statements. And I'm going to give you a big confession because, you know, this one comes clear to mind driving back from the gathering, uh, Jesse and Paul are, you know, thinking and they're troubled. They're puzzled. What is this about? Because, you know, they had goals and what are we going to do? And they're thinking of things in the future for them as growing in their love for Jehovah. You know, is that true, Dad? And so I said, look, and let me tell you, these people saying these things were longtime servants. Experienced people. If any of you are guilty, God loves you. He forgives you. <laughs> if you did that back then, uh, you didn't help anybody. Uh, but I, I'm going to give you a big confession. So that one particular night, we're, we're driving back. It was a little distance from where we were. And they brought that up. They're sitting in the back seats. So we're having this conversation. And I told them, I said, look, you boys remember you got to keep on the watch. This thing could go on and be ready for it to go to 2020. <laughs> Honest. I mean, this, we're talking almost 40 years. Almost 40 years. I felt pretty safe with that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what year this is. <laughs> what, what are you going to do? <laughs> But at, at least I'm happy to say they and uh, my wife and their wives, we're all still keeping on the watch, have been and continue to plan to keep on the watch. Isn't it cringeworthy to see a governing body member essentially joking about how much time has passed during which he's been proclaiming Armageddon? And the audience is just laughing along. Many in that audience, as he indicates or suggests, will be older ones, will be people who have been proclaiming Armageddon, proclaiming the annihilation of all non-Jehovah's Witnesses for decades. They're in this meeting and they're laughing about how many decades have passed. And the penny doesn't drop hmm, maybe, just hear me out, <laughs> maybe could this mean that we were wrong? How hard can it be to just admit that? How hard can it be to just say, you know what, we were going around scaring people, we were scaring people at their homes on a Saturday morning, we were scaring children, with pictures of Armageddon in the publications. We were suggesting all of this was going to happen any moment, that it was just around the corner. And we were wrong. It didn't happen. But they can't say they're wrong. They can't admit that. It's all got to be, oh no, we were right. It just wasn't going to happen back then. It's going to happen now instead. And the cycle continues. 
history repeats itself. I'm sure Tony Morris enjoyed sharing that anecdote where he suggests to his sons that it could go on until 2020. I'm sure in the back of his mind, he'll be impressed with how clairvoyant he was <laughs> at being able to tell his sons back then, look, it could go on until 2020. I think that's where he's coming from with telling this story. The awkward thing is, is that people will be watching this clip another 40 years from now and laughing at the fact that the same mistake is being repeated again and again by future generations of Jehovah's Witnesses. I hate to break it to you, Tony, and Jesse and Paul, and whoever else needs to hear this, but Armageddon isn't coming. If there is anything approaching an Armageddon, and there's no guarantees that this planet, that the human species, will just continue forever... With climate change, there's ever-increasing reasons for concern in that regard. But if our species ever comes to an end, if there is ever a global catastrophe where billions die, it will not be as a result of this bloated fool riding around on a heavenly horse, killing people who failed to acknowledge his authority. That Armageddon, I think we can safely say, is never going to happen. It's preposterous. But if you're one of Jehovah's Witnesses, Tony Morris needs you to buy into this fantasy because that's the only chance he has of controlling you. There's just one small problem. He's repeating exactly the same rhetoric that we've seen in the organization's publications going back decades. And this is where we get to the irony of his anecdote, where he's essentially shaming people who he encountered at a social gathering for, again, taking the organization's publications seriously and telling Tony Morris's two sons, Jesse and Paul, that they wouldn't graduate. However, from time to time, this, this statement, and they'd be looking at my sons and, oh, you're, you'll never graduate in this system. Not going to happen. Let me tell you, these people saying these things were longtime servants, experienced people. If any of you are guilty, God loves you. He forgives you. <laughs> if you did that back then, uh, you didn't help anybody. If you did that back then... You didn't help anybody. Tony Morris's words. Let's look, shall we, <laughs> at the 1969 Awake. You can't search this if you are one of Jehovah's Witnesses on Watchtower Library. Curiously, the Awakes on Watchtower Online Library only go as far back as 1970, but the year before... 1969, an article appeared in the May 22nd Awake magazine, What Future for the Young? Let's see if that shows up on camera. I think it does. What Future for the Young? Allow me to read a couple of paragraphs. If you are a young person, you also need to face the fact that you will never grow old in this present system of things. Why not? Because all the evidence in fulfilment of Bible prophecy indicates that this corrupt system is due to end in a few years. Of the generation that observed the beginning of the last days in 1914, Jesus foretold, this generation will by no means pass away until all these things occur. Therefore, as a young person, you will never fulfill any career that this system offers. If you are in high school and thinking about a college education, it means at least four 
perhaps even six or eight more years to graduate into a specialised career. But where will this system of things be by that time? It will be well on the way towards its finish, if not actually gone. 1969, these words were penned. And what was it that Tony Morris was sneering at those older brothers and sisters for saying. However, from time to time, this, this statement, and they'd be looking at my sons and, oh, you're, you'll never graduate in this system. Not going to happen. If any of you are guilty, God loves you. He forgives you. <laughs> if you did that back then, uh, you didn't help anybody. The long-time servants, the experienced Jehovah's Witnesses, that Tony Morris is here mocking on the platform at the 2021 annual meeting, were only saying to his sons, almost verbatim, what it was saying in the publications. And Tony Morris is deriding these people for, quote, not helping anybody can we not also then say exactly the same thing for these words in the 1969 Awake? Interestingly, what Tony Morris has done in this talk is not just victim blaming, it's not just deriding people for taking their beliefs seriously, for reading spiritual food and talking about it at social gatherings, in terms of it being truthful, in terms of it having something important to say about the times they were living in, he's not just victim-blaming fellow Jehovah's Witnesses of his generation, he's also inadvertently condemning the organization's own materials. Materials that I agree didn't help anybody. 